There's an air of anticipation up here in Washington, D.C. We are 18 hours away from this new Congress taking control. That's the damage that we all felt last night. Jeff, what are the chances that we see that again tonight? They're using bucket trucks, uh, so they're trying to get more of an aerial or elevated view to try and find the suspect. It seems like a weird connection in a way. You're from, originally from Connecticut, Harvard grad, worth $200 million. That, does that fit around in here? And the criticism with your plan, Mr. McDonald, is simply that it's unproven, that these are rehashed topics. There is no question that this was a somber day, but I think it would be difficult to walk away from the ceremonies that were held here and not be inspired. Hertz home is just a couple of blocks from his law office, comes complete with the white picket fence, and his parents are just right across the street. Talk about an understanding wife. I want to make sure under earning what your set goal is, that doesn't mean that you're not making a profit. Are you saying tonight that you are not making a profit? Like that? Oh. Right in the face again. <laughs> yeah, sometimes if there's <laughs> customers there, sometimes it goes the other way. Yes. Hey, listen, we've got great weather. Thank you, Storm Team 10 and Jeff Hanowich for that. And hey, look, I've got a special <laughs> guest standing next to me. Oh, Old St. Nick is with me. When we come know. back, we're going to light the Christmas tree and we'll hear from Santa Claus. We start tonight with some good news as dogs from Roanoke's Regional Center for Animal Control and Protection who participated in the Dickens of a Christmas Parade are now finding homes. As you reported last month, a new partnership with Angels of CC in the center is taking the dogs out to events to try and get them adopted. New tonight at 11, WSLS 10's Morgan Donnelly updates us on the progress of those adoptions. Morgan, it's so nice to have a good story here. What are the numbers here? Well, Jay Let's turn to your forecast now. The sun was out today and it looks like warmer temperatures lie ahead for what we can expect overnight and into the days ahead. Let's go now to Storm Team 10 Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz. Jeff, I am loving the sunshine out there. Yeah, it's certainly nice. All right, Jeff, well, it's the first day on the job for dozens of congressional leaders up on Capitol Hill. The nation's 113th Congress convened in Washington today, swearing in both newly elected and re-elected officials. Now, here are the facts about this year's class. There are 84 House freshmen. Mr. WSLS Kane, 10's Aaron Martin spoke to Senator Kane John, shortly after he was sworn in and joins us now live in our newsroom. Aaron, we all know that while this is a new Congress, there are a lot of old problems that still need to be addressed. Does Senator Kane give you any idea of how he plans to address those issues in his new role? Yeah, Jay. The four points of the Miss America crown are style, service, scholarship, and success. And today, the young woman who represents those four things for the Commonwealth hopped on a plane to pursue her dream. Emergency rooms and walk-in clinics across the country are full of people infected with the flu. And according to the most recent information released from the CDC, flu activity is now at its highest level in the South, including right here in the Commonwealth. WSLS 10's Carrie McNew joins us now with a look at some groundbreaking research. Well, from the Blue Ridge Parkway to Mill Mountain, the Roanoke Valley is known for its outdoor attractions, mm -hmm. but why not get a taste of them as well? Oh, sounds yeah. good. 60 degrees Could in January. How yeah. about that? It's not record breaking, but hey, you know what? It's pretty darn good. It's pretty darn good no matter how you slice <laughs> it. You got that right, buddy. All right, I'm sure many of you are fed up with Congress, and the owners of one local business have found a, well, unique way to show their frustration. This week, the Roanoke <laughs> Bagel Company on Electric Road is featuring the congressional sandwich on its menu. Yeah. Okay, so what type of sandwich is it? Well, bologna, of course. <laughs> Co-owner Amelia Goodacre says the sandwich is in honor of all the chaos going on in Washington. Goodacre says they're using top-end bologna for the sandwich, but much like Congress, she says it's still bologna. Whether you pay a lot for it or not, still get a big old bologna sandwich. Oh, That's kind of cool. Most of us don't get any money for shoveling. No, stuff. in fact, except a sore back. Sore back. It's, it's interesting to me that these coaches that have just been fired now all of a sudden hot commodities in other cities. I, I've never, it's understood, strange, I've isn't never it? understood it. I would have expected more coordinators to be looked at. Yeah. But it, it's not happening. Good evening and welcome everyone to a special edition of WSLS 10 Your Side at 6. I'm Jay Warren, live outside the Pentagon. You know, a decade ago, a band of terrorists attacked our country. They tried to tear down everything we stand for, what we believe in, the fiber of our country. And while they inflicted a lot of pain, there's no debate about that, they did not succeed. September 11th, that was a day to remember all of that, to think about what happened on that day, how it's changed our country, and perhaps most importantly, how it has made us a stronger country. Well, we want to begin tonight at the Pentagon. I was here this morning and I will tell you this place has been rebuilt and that spirit was on full display. 
Now, President Obama and the First Lady actually started in New York today, then to Pennsylvania, ending their day here in Virginia. We have some video of them at the memorial outside the Pentagon for the victims of this attack. There is no question that this was a somber day, but I think it would be difficult to walk away from the ceremonies that were held here and not be inspired. Inspired by the strength of the families that were left behind and by the survivors, inspired by the strength of our country. It was said over and over by the speakers and also by our state leaders. Here's a portion of my conversation with Governor Bob McDonnell and Senator Mark Warner. What the terrorists tried to do to... As I mentioned, there were ceremonies held across the country, notably, of course, in New York City, but also in Pennsylvania, where the heroes on that flight took that plane down, knowing full well if they didn't, it was headed for the United States Capitol or for the White House. NBC's Michelle Franzen has more on those remembrance ceremonies. Tenure size Ken Heineck joins us now live from our newsroom in Roanoke with more on a ceremony held in downtown Roanoke just wrapping up a few minutes ago. Ken? All right, thank you, Ken. Also at Virginia Tech, hundreds of Hokies came out to remember this tragic anniversary. They were out on the drill field where they had a wreath dedication for the first responders. I want to leave you with one last thought tonight. During the remembrance ceremony, while the vice president was speaking and the defense secretary was speaking, planes were flying over the Pentagon from National Airport. And I'll tell you, at first it was a little jarring, the memory of what happened at 9-11 so fresh in our minds, but ultimately I think it was a great symbol of how the terrorists did not win. They may have changed our security in our country, but they did not change fundamentally who we are, and we can never lose sight of that. We're going to leave you tonight with some of the images of the remembrance ceremonies held throughout this area. Good night. In a special report you'll only see on WSLS, a local research project uncovers millions of dollars potentially wasted by the government. And you know each year, federal grant money is awarded to scientists for research from a host of government agencies. But exactly how much of that money that's coming out of your wallet is being misspent? Well, I'll break down those numbers and show you how a Virginia Tech professor is working to save you money. We've all heard of research studies that look at turning algae into fuel as an example, or creating a more advanced MRI machine, or maybe science to cure cancer. All worthy causes, but who's paying for it? Well, often it is you, your taxes coming from here and a host of government agencies. And in some cases, that money isn't being well spent. There are some scientists who are uh, gaming the system in order to fund their labs. Dr. Skip Garner is a professor and researcher at the Virginia Tech Bioinformatics Institute. Last year, he heard President Obama say that there needs to be a review in the way grant money is given out. We said, aha, you know, uh, we can do that. So Garner and his researchers designed a program to be run through this. What you see in this room is uh, a supercomputer we call Shadowfax. And for a project of this size, you need a supercomputer. Shadowfax, over two to three months, went through 900,000 grant applications, looking solely for similarities. And it found thousands of matches. Those suspicious grants went straight to Dr. Garner's eyes for a more tedious human review. The result? 167 pairs of projects likely got two, three, or four grants to do the same work. I was surprised by the amount and ease with which we found these things. The price tag will really startle you. $70 million from this smaller study alone was possibly double granted. What that means is that there's probably 400 to 500 different grants that are not funded. And so those are five, four or 500 different scientific projects uh, which are not getting the money to advance their science. Because of this problem. Because of this problem. And the money drop gets even worse. Garner figures the problem to be close to 300 million a year for all government agencies, totaling $5 billion misspent since 1985. Now, Dr. Garner says that taking two grants or more to do the same project is unethical and can possibly be criminal. And he expects the General Accounting Office of the federal government to review his research and likely expand it for a more thorough review. Here in Roanoke, our city leaders have laid out their own vision for what's next. It's a vision that will shape and redevelop the Star City over the next 30 years. Over the last five years, we've seen a lot of work in downtown, from the Taubman Museum to Center in the Square to downtown living to the med school. And the heart of it all, the redo of the historic market building, the crown jewel of Roanoke. 
And it is here that city leaders like Vice Mayor Cord Rosen may have placed one of their biggest bets. The hope is, is that the market building renovation is one spoke in the wheel that we're continuing to try to build to create that downtown that long term I think we all know Roanoke can be. And what about the other spokes in that wheel for Roanoke's growth? Rosen says it's a combination of brick and mortar projects on Jefferson Street in downtown and across from Valley View mixed with infrastructure investments and continued spending on core services like education, roads and parks. Mixed in that is no one shining star or silver bullet on purpose. We don't need a Hail Mary pass. You know, maybe maybe Flint, Michigan does, but we don't need it. In fact, need city to manager to Chris Morrill's plan laid out in a series of slides on his computer focuses on more incremental growth to carry Roanoke into its next chapter. Now that includes building out this entire area from the Roanoke River over there over to Jefferson Street, connecting what is the Virginia Tech School of Medicine with downtown Roanoke. It's a $100 million private-public partnership to include apartments, restaurants, offices, and city-paid-for parks, roads, and sidewalks. Expect all of that in the next decade. Now, across from Valley View Mall, once they get the interchange built over the interstate, we're talking a big development here, 130 acres. It will start with up close to the interstate big box stores. A little further in, things like restaurants, some office space, and the further back you go, more residential and parks. Timeline on this project closer to 15 or 20 years. And then there's downtown. Already there's a contract to put a hotel up on top of Market Garage, adding 120 rooms. And there are more hotels to come. We hope that others will follow. So we'll end up with quite a few hotels maybe in downtown and new building actually happening in downtown? I think the overall hope would be that we have more, more retail downtown, that hopefully we do have a need and demand for more hotels downtown and a continued need for office space and, and uh, residences. Timeline for that, most likely a decade. Add in the other larger projects like the Elmwood Park revamp, complete with amphitheater, and the redevelopment of countryside, and you'll see a lot of dirt moving in Roanoke. Everything else in the city's agenda is less, well, fun, but just as important. Like stormwater upgrades, bridge repairs, sidewalk expansions, and building up broadband to compete for jobs. A combination of all of that, plus the building projects, and Morrill says... We will be a place that around the country folks will talk about um, that, you know, gosh, I want to go, I want to move to, I don't have a job, I'm not sure, but I want to move to Roanoke because that's a great place to live. One last component of all this, of course, is selling Roanoke. City Manager Chris Morrill says that's one thing that Roanoke hasn't invested enough on in the past, and he says a more regional approach to that could actually help market our area and drive some significant tourism dollars. Holds. Walking into Pops in Raleigh Court is like walking back in time. An old school ice cream parlor complete with a 1930s soda machine. It's good to have the real stuff. You know, you can buy new stuff that looks like the old stuff, but to have a, it's like having an antique car. You know, you can maybe get a car that looks antique, but it's you know, not the same as having a real thing. Brandon Davis is co-owner of Pops, but his more important title here is Soda Jerk. If you look under job descriptions, it's a soda technician. And there is a definite skill here, a finesse of this handle that controls the stream of soda. One wrong move and it is a mess. I'll demonstrate the, uh, well, messy part of that a little later. Here's a mint chip. At Pops, there's a host of ice cream flavors from lemon crunch to coconut, but without debate, the most popular thing on the menu is the ice cream soda, generally made with the standard vanilla or chocolate. Brandon says every so often a soda jerk from many years ago will come in, offering up some old school recipes. They all, all have kind of crazy names for some of them. You know, we have a, like a purple cow, and then, you know, you have a... You know, all this crazy stuff, you know, Catawba Flip. And one of the most traditional is the Broadway, which Brandon made for us. This is a recipe from the, you know, 40s, maybe 30s. Basically chocolate syrup, and then we have our chocolate up here. So one nice squirt of chocolate syrup, and then we put some whipped cream in there. All right, now here's where the magic really happens. You know, I have to blast it to get that chocolate out from the bottom. And then a little quick fill to add some more. So you have to have ice cream for ice cream soda. And then to finish it off, I just kind of blast it like that. Whipped cream on top here. Now it's my turn, and at his suggestion, I'm trying a lemon drop made with lemon syrup. So just we'll pour it in this. A little bit of whipped cream in there. Hold the glass down like that? Oh yeah, otherwise it might come shooting out. There you go. 
awesome. All right. All right. So that's kind of the mixing action. The goal here is to get a nice round scoop yeah. like that. Yeah, that's a good size actually too. Right. Oh, good. Awesome. Oh. Right in the face, <laughs> like that. Oh. Right in the face again. <laughs> yeah, sometimes if there's <laughs> customers there, sometimes it goes the other way. Yes, got a little wet in the process. I mean, it's going to taste good anyway, right? Yeah. you got to get the lemon drop mustache, <laughs> right? That's good. 